So if cognition could notionally be plotted on a spectrum on which you would find birds and canines and, and primates, are you nonetheless of the opinion that there is a difference of kind as well as a difference of degree between us and which, whichever species might come close to us? The idea that humans are cognitively unique has taken a battering over the years because most comparative cognitive psychologists have been straining at the leash to try and show that there's almost an uninterrupted continuum, if you like, along um, various aspects of cognition between us and other animal species. But I don't think that that's correct. And I think the idea of human cognitive uniqueness is now actually starting to reassert itself. There are a whole number of areas in which the human mind works that you see no evidence for it working in other animal species. Uh, the most obvious thing is human language. Uh, despite all the hoo-ha over ape language experiments over the years, they cannot come anything near to uh, the, uh, the structure and widespread use of language that we humans have evolved. We also make huge uh, use of recursion, the idea of being able to, to think about things, acting upon things, acting upon things, acting upon things, in order to explain the world. Other animals do not appear to be able to use recursion. We also generalise. We can put information from various contexts together in fresh contexts in order to arrive at an explanation for what's happening in the physical world. So we, we can generalise in that way. Other animals simply cannot reach these heights. So there are a whole number of things. One, um, uh, one very prominent cognitive psychologist called Mark Hauser has pulled all these aspects into what he calls the human uniqueness, hum, humaniqueness oh. hypothesis. And I think it's a very, very good line because it is quite clear that the gulf is very large. Hauser actually puts it much more graphically than I can when he says that the cognitive gulf, we have something to really explain here because he believes that the cognitive gulf between us and the rest of the great apes is greater than the cognitive gulf between them and earthworms. Oh. Let me ask you, uh, final, finally, Jeremy, 20 years from now, how do you think we might be looking at uh, this question and our attitude to the great apes? I think it may take another 20 years for the fruits of all this genomics work. What's happening at the moment, I think, is very exciting. It's only been four years since the chimpanzee genome was actually rolled out in sufficient detail to allow these very significant comparisons between humans and chimpanzees and other species. It's only over the last two or three years that a group of, I think, extraordinary scientists have begun taking genomics, neuroscience, the structure and function of brains, and cognition, how brains work to produce mental activity and behaviour, and begun to try and really forge links and understanding between these three different levels of looking at organisms. In other words, rolling genomics, neuroscience and cognition into a really profound understanding of how, of how evolution works. And I think that is going to be something that will take time, but I think in 20 years' time we will have made huge strides in understanding the interaction between changes in our genome, particularly in the brain, the minute structure and function of our brains and how that gives rise to different cognition.